Okay, so now our physical flow, the job order costing system that mirrors that physical flow. Well, you cannot, you cannot escape it. Debits, credits. I know you're all going into an, some kind of seizure at the moment. Uh, but there is a financial accounting flow. And what I've attempted to do here is demonstrate this in the form of T accounts. So you remember some things about T accounts, right? The left side is the debit side. The right side is the credit side. Why they call it that, the only thing I can think of is left was already taken and right was already taken. So they called it debit and credit. That was a joke, by the way. Okay, so the various accounts that we're going to have, and there is an actual general ledger account for each one of these. For the raw material stock room, there's a raw material inventory account. For work in process, there is a WIP account. Ah, uh, and for finished goods, there's a finished goods account. I've added a few more to embellish the movement of the costs, a movement and tracking of the flow of costs for you. I've added some accounts payable, some wages payable, some factory overhead, some cost of goods sold from sales, and some accounts receivable. But before I do this, I want to show you one other slide to make sure you have this understand the flow of costs at the 35,000 foot level before we get into this detail. This is a conceptual overview of the flow of costs in a manufacturing environment. And in this particular case, we're going to apply it to a job order costing system. Here are the costs that we incur. When we buy raw material, that material purchases costs goes into raw material inventory. It is a balance sheet inventory account. It's unique and distinct from any other inventory account. So the thing that you have to understand here in a manufacturing environment, there are three. There are three inventory accounts. Whereas you may be used to inventory as one account. And that very well may be the case at a Nordstrom or a Foot Locker. But that is not the case at a manufacturer. So when you buy that raw material, it goes into... When you buy the uh, material and purchase it, it goes into raw material inventory at its cost. <clears throat> that raw material ultimately gets issued to work in process, where we will then add direct labor and add manufacturing overhead, where we will collect the costs as we are converting that raw material into a finished product. So work in process then represents at any one point in time, as does raw material, let me just start that again. Raw material inventory represents the sum total of all of those material ledger cards. And work in process at any point in time equals the sum total of all the job cost summary sheets that are in process at any one time. And then once that job is complete, the products go into finished goods, where they will remain on the balance sheet until such time as they are sold. When you sell them, they come out of finished goods and they hit COGS and they are then expensed. Keep in mind then selling an admin and HR and finance and legal and corporate IT and facilities and all of those other costs are period costs and they hit the income statement when they are incurred. The key thing here is all of these manufacturing costs do not hit the income statement until you sell them. So with that in mind, how do, we value the, how do we value these and how do we track those costs in the general ledger? Which takes us back to this slide. So when that raw material is received here in the physical, up here in the physical item, when that FedEx truck delivers it and that receiving clerk sends the accounting department, I received it, they in turn will debit raw material inventory Add raw material to inventory. So when you see number one here, just refer to number one here, which explains what's going on. I'm adding raw material to inventory and I'm creating a liability. That liability is I owe that company that money. Okay. So there's my debit to raw material. There's my credit to accounts payable. Someday I'm going to pay that bill. When I actually get my invoice, I'm going to pay it. Now, when I am told by production control to build the product, I'm going to issue that raw material as soon as I receive that material requisition. Transaction two is I'm going to transfer raw material out of raw material and I'm going to put it in WIP. So I'm going to credit raw material, take raw material down, 
but I'm going to take work in process or WIP up. I haven't changed the financial condition of my assets. I've just moved it from one physical location to another and one general ledger account to another. Number three, I'm now going to add direct labor to the equation. When I add that direct labor to build the product, I'm actually owe people money. So what I'm representing here with a debit with transaction three to work in process and a credit to wages payable is I'm attempting to, re to reflect that I, as soon as that person fills out that time card, I owe them money. So for all practical purposes, I've incurred some kind of an expense or some cost. So I need to reflect that with a credit to the liability wages payable. We also <clears throat> um, have to incur some cost associated with overhead. So transaction four is representing, and I just chose to use this just because it's arbitrary. I'm increasing factory overhead account. Now factory overhead is a temporary account that accumulates all of the overhead associated with the manufacturing process so that we ultimately will transfer that into the cost of the product. So transaction four reflects indirect labor. That could be the boss man walking around making sure people are working, or it could be the buyer of the raw material, or it could be that material person who issues the order to build product. Whatever the case may be, that factory overhead is debited to represent an increase in overhead and creating a liability to pay of uh, those people for their indirect labor. Transaction five represents getting the overhead into the cost of the product. So that relates to this factory overhead going into the job cost summary sheet. And as I mentioned to you earlier, we will later determine how we actually figure out how much overhead goes into each individual job. That's a little early for us to get into that right now. I want you to at least recognize the fact that there needs to be a mechanism to get it in, and this reflects the financial journal entry, a debit to work in process, and a credit to overhead to get that cost into the product. Once we're done making all of these guys, we credit work in process, because we're taking it out of work in process, and we're moving it into finished goods, where it will sit. And the value of that transaction is going to be equal to the job cost summary sheet. When the time comes to sell this product, Transaction number seven, we will recognize the cost of the product sold by crediting finished goods and debiting cost of goods sold. Lastly, transaction eight, let's recognize the sale, which is a credit to the sales account and a debit to the accounts receivable account. Could be cash depending upon the method with which you do your business. But you can see that this flow, this financial flow, is the detail behind this financial flow. And ultimately, when we transfer from finished goods into COGS, we credit finished goods and debit COGS. I hope this gives you the framework here to understand how the physical flow of product through manufacturing and the job order costing system that captures the cost, how it all ties together and it's overseen, if you will, you know, kind of the, the gorilla in the room there's always the financial accounting system that has to be accurate.